Antarctica is considered to be the most mysterious continent on Earth, and some even believe that if you explore it too much, you'll fall off the side of the planet. But in any case, some wonder why we are so focused on trying to colonize places like Mars when we haven't even figured out how to permanently live on Antarctica instead. By understanding better what's under the ice, we can have a better insight on how life can exist on other planets in the solar system, and it might be more possible than you want to believe. Hey guys, this is your host, American Eye, but today I'm right here on Taltanic, bringing you this video. Here is Antarctica, what's under the ice. The ALH-84001 A team of U.S. meteorite hunters came across the ALH-84001 in Allen Hills on December 27, 1984. It's been one of the more intriguing meteorites ever discovered. This 4.3-pound object is believed to have come from Mars, and scientists believe that they found evidence of fossilized Martian bacteria. Believed to be over 4 billion years old, it could point to the possibility of life on Mars around that time. The claim started off to be rather controversial, especially among the scientific community, but what would you expect if evidence of aliens was discovered? It's also considered to be the oldest of Martian meteorites, and it was discovered on the ice-covered continent of Antarctica. Underneath an electron microscope, you can see there appears to be some kind of microbial structure. David S. McKay, a leader of NASA scientists, explained that the meteorite must have hosted Martian bacteria at some point in the distant past. Some of the features that were found featured bacteria found on land, even though they're smaller than average. This isn't the only fossil from outer space, but many feel as though research on Antarctica is key for finding out if we're all alone or not. Volcanoes Many geologists should be more worried about these volcanoes under the ice erupting than they should be about global warming. If some of these active volcanoes were to erupt, they would melt the ice quicker than climate change ever could. A few of them are below about a mile of ice, and scientists have revealed at least 100 volcanoes, primarily sitting on the western edge of the continent. It's currently rated to be the densest concentration of volcanoes in the world, and their potential would be devastating. Some indications would suggest that the volcanoes are deep enough under the ice that lava wouldn't escape through the surface, but would still cause a lot destabilization. Mount Erebus is the most active volcano in Antarctica and the second highest peak. Fire meets ice when this thing goes off. The summit reaches 12,448 feet and is located on Ross Island. This volcano has been active for 1.3 million years and still goes off occasionally. It was discovered in 1841 by Sir James Clark Ross and named after the bow that helped him get there. Mountains or pyramids When you think of great mountain chains across the world, you might think of the Himalayas, the Rockies, the Alps, but really does anyone ever mention the Transantarctic Mountains? Why is that exactly? Mainly because they don't seem quite as tall since they're mainly covered in snow. The mountain range essentially divides West and East Antarctica, which helps provide some diversity on the continent. Being formed about 65 million years ago, what's also important to note is that the last trees that existed in the southern continent were found in this mountain range. They were primarily unexplored until Operation High Jump took place, but how sure are we that some of these mountains aren't pyramids? The Rothschild Island Many of us wonder whether or not we're being told the truth about Antarctica, and then you realize that there's a place called Rothschild Island, and you start to question what's under the ice. Rothschild Island is conveniently located in western Antarctica and named in honor of Baron Edward de Rothschild, who was head of the banking family's operation in France. It is protected by the Antarctic Treaty System, which bans all industrial development, including military bases, waste disposal, and nuclear testing, in order not to harm the fragile ecosystem. But who created the whole treaty in the first place? This treaty was signed by 50 different countries, which guarantees access to basically any country as long as it's for research purposes. So although it's not owned by the Rothschild family, some theories claim that there's a nuclear power plant underneath the ice in order to power some kind of underground city, but who knows? The only countries not allowed in Antarctica are North Korea, Iran, Syria, and Cuba. Notice anything in common? We're sure if civilization gets started on this continent, they'll at least set up a bank here. Little Americas in the past, there were military operations that weren't always successful in Antarctica conducted by the U.S. Once in 1946 through 1947 known as Operation High Jump in order to basically install some kind of presence on the southernmost continent. The other one was Operation Deep Freeze 10 years later. What would the military be trying to do on this vast mysterious continent? The U.S. set up a series of bases known as Little Americas 1 through 5 between 1929 to 1958 located on the South Bay of Wales. The first Little America was built in 1929 and left abandoned the next year. Many letters were sent from this location, but eventually went abandoned. Finally, radio broadcasting was introduced at Little America 2 on an iceberg, and it's believed that the radio towers are still out there, somewhere under the ice. Soviet's wreckage. Many countries had flocked to Antarctica for research and scientific studies. One of the countries, of course, was the Soviet Union in 1958. 
They also left behind some of the eeriest bases and structures from their attempt of a stronghold. They had to live in conditions even colder than in Russia, which reached temperatures of negative 72 degrees in the winter. Here we see a statue of Lenin coming out of a coffin-shaped box in order to remind them of their homeland. Unfortunately for them, the station went abandoned only a year later. They tried to reoccupy the base, but they failed again in 1979. Here we see vehicles that litter the snow and oil station that used to fuel them. Niobium Crystal It turns out that one of the resources found in Antarctica is niobium, which can be used to create super alloys which are used in jet engines, gas turbines, rocket sub-assemblies, and other space-age technologies. It can also be used as a superconductor in free electron lasers. It's a chemical element with an atomic number of 41, and described as a soft, gray, crystalline, ductile transition metal with many unique properties to it. Some feel as though niobium could be used in alien spacecraft, which is why there's a large quantity of UFO crashes in the area. Dinosaur Fossils A recent expedition in 2016 took place off the coast of Ross Island, far south of Chile, and lasted about a month. A group of archaeologists from Australia, United States, and South Africa got exactly what they were looking for when they discovered fossils that were over 60 million years old. They went to one of the few places in Antarctica where more rocks are exposed in summertime and covered by snow in winter. More than a ton of fossils were uncovered and are currently being preserved in Chile. The remains belong to marine reptiles like plesiosaurs and monosaurs that were in the film Jurassic World. These discoveries help scientists understand better what Antarctica was like in the prehistoric world. UFO Crashes World governments might also be interested in the possible abundance of crash alien technology on this continent, which has made it difficult for an average person to catch a flight here. Antarctica is a massive continent that remains for the most part unexplored. If a UFO had crashed on the land, how do we know? Google Maps UFO enthusiasts are convinced that this is exactly what happened, and they are claiming that this is actually a true crash site that we see in this photo. There is indeed snow that appears to be disturbed, and also appears that there's a hole in the shape of a flying saucer. An alien hunter from Russia, Valentin Degretev, says, in amongst endless ice desert, it is the most genuine UFO in the most classic shape. So if it's not a UFO, then what could it be? Skeptics still believe it's just a crack in the ice. Until someone goes to the location for themselves, we won't know for sure. The Penguin Mobile From 1937 to 1939, a vehicle was introduced to Antarctica known as the Snow Cruiser, but also known as the Penguin. It was left abandoned and rediscovered during Operation High Jump. Other rumors state that the Soviets destroyed it during the Cold War, but it's nowhere to be found. A few more attempts to settle on the icy continent would fail, and many would simply float away into the ocean. Eventually, it wasn't until 1959 when different countries agreed that only scientists were allowed here. Microbial Life it's believed that underneath the ice are deadly viruses that humans have no immunity for. This has happened before in Siberia, and the largest known virus was discovered below about 100 feet of permafrost soil. This ancient virus would still be infectious to humans if it's thawed, but they claim it has no effect on humans. So what kind of viruses could be dormant underneath all that ice on Antarctica? Some believe that if somehow the ice would become completely melted, viruses that were long trapped in there for centuries could usher in some type of zombie apocalypse. McMurdo Valley when you think of Antarctica, a few things normally come to mind. Snow, penguins, and ice. But if you want to get a good understanding of how parts of Antarctica might look under the ice, it's important to research the McMurdo Dry Valley. The McMurdo Dry Valleys are rare snow-free valleys in Antarctica and looks more like your normal desert. What's strange though is only microscopic organisms can actually survive the low humidity. No current discoveries of living creatures have been found here, not even penguins. And the weather is extremely inhospitable. Winds can reach up to 200 miles per hour. Whoever discovered this region probably regretted it. Scientists consider the environment very similar to that of Mars, and studying the microorganisms here can possibly give insight on extraterrestrial life. This mysterious base on Google. Some believe it's a glitch on Google Maps, but it's open for interpretation. Whatever it is, it's 14 miles long and about 5 miles wide. Could it be a mysterious UFO landing base or some kind of giant power plant? Possibly a poorly camouflaged opening that was drilled into the ice that might lead to an underground city? Whatever it is, it appears to at least be reflecting some kind of light from the sun, which would almost make you believe it's some kind of solar power generator. We've also seen places on Google that have been censored in bizarre fashions, which could certainly be the case. But if it was the case, what would Google want to be censoring on the continent where nothing but scientific experiments are going on? And number one, under ice rivers. It turns out Antarctica is full of liquid rivers that are quite widespread across the continent. As weird as it might sound, it's not a mirage, and there's even a creepy waterfall here known as Blood Falls. The water in the area is extremely salty and won't even freeze even though it's well below the normal freezing point for water. When glaciers began to form here, iron rock was scraped off from the ground below. Oxygen in the air turned the iron-rich water into a bright red, which leaves an eerie appearance. 
But further analysis at Columbia University revealed streams, channels, ponds, as well as drainage bases which come from the melted ice. Although they were well documented before the World War II era, many people didn't believe how extensive they were until now. Many of the rivers are quite long and are more widespread than originally thought. Many are quick to blame global warming for the melting of the ice here, but could something else be going on, melting the ice on the southern continent in order to usher in the apocalypse? Who knows?